Welcome to a look into the future, where we ask, what would you do if you can go into the future and ask yourself questions about how to grow your firm, how to transition to advisory services, and more? Luckily, we don't need to invent time travel. We don't need to go watch Avengers Endgame to understand time travel theories, rules. We can just ask the time traveler himself, Paul Latham, and learn the knowledge we need at our firms today to evolve in advisory services and become the most relevant advisor to our clients. And we're very lucky because Paul brings three amazing things with him. Number one, he's built a successful accounting practice in the UK, so he understands us accountants. In fact, he built his firm to an advisory powerhouse, which sold for $45 million back in 2001. Number two, he's taken the business public. That's right, he took the business public, so he really understands what business owners need and value and what we as accountants need to provide to them. And finally, as I said, number three, we don't need to invent time travel. We just get to ask Paul and learn from the transition he made over 20 years ago in the UK, as that changes here today in the United States, without a doubt. I'm Garrett Wagner, entrepreneurial CPA channel host, and as always, I'm excited to be joined by the legendary Paul Latham of Hayden Rock Solutions. Now, Paul, we're back at it. We're doing some more audience question and answers. And this is a great one. This is one I often wonder myself. As, as I hear you say this, I don't want to stop you and ask, but I'm going to ask it right now. I've heard you say, talk about the importance of eating elephant sandwiches. Hi, what Garrett. Hi, Garrett. Good day to you. Uh, yeah, eating elephant sandwiches, it's one of my favorite metaphors. Um, it's one I often use when I'm working with a client providing business advisory services. Um, bit of context first. Really, there are two types of business strategy, uh, very simplistically. There's the short-term strategy and the long-term strategy. And not surprisingly, most businesses spend most of their time doing short-term stuff. And not surprisingly, most businesses don't spend anywhere near enough time looking into the long-term or doing long-term stuff. And as I often say to my clients, it's sort of a fact. If you spend all of your time on the, on the short term, then guess what? You're only ever going to be looking at the short term. And that means you're never going to be considering the long term. And eventually, that is definitely going to become a problem for your business. And you sort of then have to dig under the surface a little and say, so why is it that people only spend their time looking at short term stuff? And the trouble really is that certain tasks in business are big. And they're really too big to implement or do or complete on a given day of the week. But we tend to like to do things that we can just do on a given day of the week. And the truth is these big things, because they're so big and you can't do them on a given day, you can't do it on a Wednesday, they actually then never happen. And the metaphor that, of the elephant sandwiches actually starts, and I use the metaphor then of, or an example of a turkey at Thanksgiving. Um, if you have a turkey at Thanksgiving, Usually the typical turkey is too big for the typical family to consume in one sitting. So what they actually end up doing once they've had the main meal is they consume the turkey over a few days and they have turkey soup and turkey stew. And if you're in England, you have turkey curry, but almost certainly they have turkey sandwiches. And after a few days, the whole turkey is eaten. And the trouble is though, that metaphor obviously comes back to the big business problems, but the big business problems bigger than a turkey. <laughs> in fact, they're the size, often the size of an elephant. And the only solution is for the business or the particular management team to, and I stress here metaphorically, slice up the elephant and basically have elephant sandwiches. In other words, consume it over a period. And it's really a very simple sort of one, two, three. Number one, you know, whoever's accountable for this task, let's say we agree with them, what percentage of their time they should allocate to the long term? And it's usually 10 to 20%, but let's say it's 10%. So if you put that into a typical week terms, that's half a day a week. So you're gonna spend half a day a week on the long term and the other four and a half days on the, on the short term. So it's about four hours a week. Number two, you have to decide how long is this task gonna take? So let's just make up a silly example that divides into four hours. So let's say it's 80 hours of a task, big elephant task, going to take us 80 hours. Obviously divided by four, that means it's going to take us 20 weeks to consume the elephant. And then three, what I typically recommend 
is that we actually allocate a particular, in this case, half day per week. So it could be Friday afternoons. So Friday afternoons is the time when I'm eating elephant sandwiches. And, and it's also quite good to share that with the rest of the team. You know, I can't do that now. I'm eating my elephant sandwiches and it sort of becomes an, an internal code for leave me alone. I'm doing my long term task. And, and in this way, that one, two, three over time, in this case, 20 weeks, that big task will happen. And, and, and there's another sort of little, and I've used the word trick, it's not really a trick, but to make sure that the, the team is sort of focused is not only to just have that one big elephant task, but to have lots and lots of other little small tasks so that you can regularly check things off on your to-do list because it makes you feel good to check things off on your to-do list. And particularly for the rest of the team, they can see some progress happening with the short-term stuff. It creates a feeling of momentum inside the business. But meanwhile, you're eating your elephant sandwiches on a Friday afternoon. You're making steady long-term progress. And it's those big tasks that usually are fundamental in really making big value changes inside your business. Does the eating elephant sandwiches metaphor make sense now, Gareth? Now I get it, Paul. Now I get it. But first, before I do, I mean, I think, I think a new avenue we can go down is like the Paul Latham cooking show. Of course, of I mean, course. clearly you talk about curry turkey, tur uh, curry turkey, and some other things. I mean, this could be a new avenue for you, Paul. You want to get into your own celebrity chef? Well, I have to say, in England, the, the, the turkey curry is one of those things. I mean, we're very big on curry in England, and turkey, okay. curry, turkey curry is a favorite of mine. I could, I, I, I could spend some time talking you through that. There we go. We'll save that for a future episode. Well, you know, I mean, that's the challenge we all face, whether it's internal firms or with our clients, if we own a business. Some of these tasks are enormous. And yeah, an elephant is a good size analogy. We can feel overwhelmed with like, oh my God, like I've got to do all of this. Like, oh my God, it's, we feel like it's impossible. So yeah, you, how do you break it down into short little bite size kind of thing? Pieces. Of, so that's the elephant sandwich. How do you tackle these monumental tasks? Yeah. Break it down. And, and I agree, whether you're, if you're a CPA firm and you want to be the relevant advisor to your clients, I would think step one, they've got to practice that internally at their own firm first master it and then go outward right yeah i agree and i mean i think it goes with any sort of business strategy if you've not done it inside your own firm you, you're not in a good place to then advise somebody else to do it you know do as i say don't do as i do but but i mean i i also wouldn't underestimate the importance of giving this little thing a title you know elephant sandwiches mm -hmm. because it, it it becomes its own internal language and you know if you say to somebody you know, leave me alone I'm eating my elephant sandwiches. They know what you're talking about and it just becomes a thing and everyone gets it. And it's actually called neuro-linguistic programming. Um, but it's a way that business teams can really begin to start working effectively together. I like it. I mean, that's, that's the great point. How do you make it comparable and understandable? Neuro-linguistic programming is a technical fancy term uh, just to make it relatable. You know, keep it simple. Keep a, an interesting anecdote or story that people get and analyze and understand. But yeah, that's a great one. Whether it's for us internally or for our clients, you know, it's a big piece. How do we become the relevant advisor to our clients? Like we talk about, you can see here, it's not about, hey, did their tax return get on time, done on time? How do you help them make big picture changes? Their elephant, advise them how to do this. Advise them how to challenge that massive change in small bite-sized pieces. So Paul, any other tips when, when firms are having these conversations with their clients about approaching the elephant sandwich for how they need to have those conversations? I think, I think in many ways, the way to do this is to head it off up front. I mean, it's always going to happen. And if you're going through a planning exercise with your client, you sort of know that there are two sorts of tasks. There's going to be the short-term ones and the long-term ones. Mm -hmm. And the real trick is not to sort of wait for it to become a problem, but to anticipate it and to say, look, you know, let's have lots and lots of those small tasks because of the reason I said before about generating momentum and so on and creating a feeling of doing things. Let's not try to do too many big tasks, the elephants, but let's do one or two or three of them and you know, anticipate that that will be a problem in the same way there's lots of other things you can anticipate will be a problem. And rather than wait for the problem to happen, say to your client, look, we need to slice this up. We need to consume this over a period. If we don't, you're actually not going to do it. So let's do it this way. I love it. Let's do it this way. Let's chat. Let's handle this together. So that was, uh, that was this, this episode for this time is the closest we might get to a Paul Latham cooking show. We learned all about how to eat your elephant sandwich and what that means. Take these big ticket, hard, difficult things, 
to break it down into smaller bite-sized chunks. So as always, I walk away learning something. I'm sure everybody else is out there as well. So as we wrap up, something Paul and I talk a lot about behind the scenes. We're surprised that most CPA firms we talk with, they're not ready for this future, and more importantly, they don't even realize it. They're sitting in the dark. But we think you need to know where you stand today. Is your firm ready for the future? Ready to shift into becoming the most relevant advisor to your clients? Take a minute and set up for your own free biz survey and get a free objective assessment of how prepared your firm is for the future. As a special offer for watching the show, we'll review the results with you. There's a link below. I encourage everyone, take some time, click on the test, see how ready your firm is for the future. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to click to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, we challenge you today to take action to change the world and invest in yourself.